This is Jane Lo, and I'm at uh, ATXSG here at Singapore Expo. And with me today, I'm very pleased and very privileged to have Damien Leach, who is the CIO with CCOM. And he's going to be sharing with us on technology leadership in the age of AI. So thank you so much, Damien, for hey, your time welcome. today. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so thank you. Um, you know, um, for our audience who are not too familiar with CCOM, could you give us a brief introduction about the company? Yeah, sure. So CCO are 60 years old. Um, we've got 3 million TUs uh, in circulation. So we um, uh, supply a container leasing um, in the industry, um, serve uh, the top um, shipping companies in the world. Uh, uh, from a transport and a logistics standpoint, we uh, supply and sell um, you know, containers um, from that standpoint. We operate and integrate to around 500 um, different um, ports and depots across the globe. We're a global company, and we've got 24 offices uh, headquartered in Singapore. All oh, right, okay, a Singapore uh, homegrown company, I guess. <laughs> right, um, yeah, so you have been in, you have extensive experience in IT technology, right? And you have experience in various different sectors. And me earlier you mentioned in your keynote that, you know, data is king in some yes. ways, right? Yeah, absolutely. In the, yeah. all the different sectors. Now, how is Gen AI or the latest iteration of AI harnessing, you know, this uh, big data set. What are some of the interesting yeah. use cases you have seen? Yeah, so that's a, that's a really interesting question. I think I think for us, um, it's really about understanding the core fundamental transformation capability that you need. It's not just about AI. You've got to look at uh, the challenges with people. You've got to look at advancing the people's learning. You've got to look at the IP that the people have. So bring them along the journey with you as you adopt new technologies. Then you mentioned a very good point about data and the importance of data. Data is absolutely king. Um, you know, in the transport industry and logistics, we uh, the amount of telemetry and information we have for our fleet is unbelievable. And it goes back all the way to 2006. So the historical uh, value of that data is incredibly important in building um, you know, models that predict things like price, demand, and other things. So the fact that we've kept that data is awesome. We need to uh, assume and, and make sure that that data is now usable with the AI models. And then thirdly, and it really talks to the, the type of innovation that you need in the organization, I believe in kind of grassroots innovation from the ground up within the team. And that's not only uh, within IT, but it's also encouraging the business to come up with ideas for us to solve. So working really, really uh, heavily in, in collaboration with the business to solve some of uh, today's business challenges with the adoption of AI has been critical. Um, to go back to your point in terms of the use cases, we've identified around 30 or so use cases, 30 plus use cases. Um, we're focused on delivering three. And the reason why we're focused on delivering three is because we've had a look at uh, the revenue impact of those three use cases and also the productivity impact of those three use cases. And they've really bubbled to the surface in terms of uh, the priority based upon those uh, two lenses. So I think it's really important if you're gonna spend a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of resources uh, to focus on business value and business value that will allow the organization to adapt, be more productive, and also has a positive impact on revenue. Mm -hmm. You talk about business value, and I think uh, when it comes to AI, you know, it's creating so much excitement and buzz that there's a, a lot of conversations around, we want AI um, to solve this problem, we want AI to solve that problem, but yeah. really it's about identifying the business problem and then assessing whether the technology is useful That's or relevant right. for that business problem, isn't it? Yeah, exactly, yeah. So I think, I think you know, there's, a, there's always, uh, you know, from an IT standpoint, there's always um, a push, I would guess, uh, from leaders that, um, to follow the big shiny new object. And, and often um, that translates into them buying the technology first without really understanding what business problems they're solving. So my view is, and the view that we've got at Seco, is our adoption starts by understanding, getting underneath the hood of the business, really understanding, immersing yourself in the business problems, understanding you know, what business problems will really be solved with technology, and then working hand in hand with the business to uh, facilitate the right data solution, uh, the right technology adoption, because we're experimenting with a lot of different technology at the moment. 
Uh, and then also uh, looking at what will generate the most business value. So you're absolutely correct. You know, for me, AI is a bit like a hammer searching for a nail, right? We've got to look at the nails first. We've got to look at the business problems first. And then you can apply the technology afterwards. And it may not often uh, be a problem that AI can solve. It could be a business in process problem. It could be an operational issue that you need to resolve. Um, but quite often it's going to translate into technology. And it may not also be AI from a technology standpoint that can solve it. It could be machine learning as an example. It could be big data. So, you know, you've really got to look at the uh, holistically the problems that you're trying to solve to figure out whether you've got the right data strategy, the data foundation, and also whether or not AI is really going to help you resolving those challenges. In your keynote, you talked about this framework called ACE, Analytics uh, Conversational and Experience, right? Yeah. To help to refine the vision or to help to identify the relevant uh, business cases. Uh, can you talk to us a bit about, more about how that helps in clarifying the vision? Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a great point. So if you boil um, sort of AI or the problems that AI is trying to solve, they fundamentally fall into those three buckets. Um, analytics, conversational, right? And um, what was the third one? Experience. <laughs> the experience. <laughs> um, so, so the analytics side is really about doing things like data summarization, looking at huge amounts of data, trying to figure out what the right um, uh, analytics you need in order to create more productivity in the organization. So that's fundamentally kind of one area that AI is good at, you could say. Another area that AI is good at is this kind of chatbot or co-pilot um, uh, you know, process. So in a way that you need sort of augmented help to facilitate um, you know, better decision making. And the third is really about um, uh, productivity and changing the experience of the organization. So I talked a little bit about the keynote where, you know, quite often um, with a traditional business such as such as ours in, in the uh, shipping, logistics, container business and leasing, we um, have a very uh, traditional approach to technology and, and to our business. And I think because of the profitability of the business, we haven't necessarily been on the leading edge of that technology sphere. So quite often, um, a lot of the business processes are backed up by the use of things like Excel and uh, business processes. And we've you know, got, got situations that we've uncovered during our discussions with the business where they've got cascaded you know, Excels, you know, five million rows of data that they're looking at, five different Excel sheets, trying to you know, predict um, uh, you know, the demand and pricing. Um, that is an awesome problem to solve with AI big data and doing forecasting based upon past trends. So, you know, as you have more in-depth conversations, you know, with the business, you uncover some of these really, uh, really integral parts of uh, our existing business process that can be uh, made more efficient, it can be automated, they can be improved. And if you use the framework of AI to understand, you know, what area, um, you know, within the ACE framework that they pocket uh, themselves into, then that will help you drive the right technology solution because there's so many different you know AI models there's so many different uh, hyperscalers that are producing different LLMs or small language models to help you with certain things uh, my view is that we've got to build our own small language model unique to our business and I think that's ultimately where the playground's going to be for a lot of organizations in terms of building a unique proposition that serve uh, serves their business uh, in this space and that's really where you're going to generate the most business value when you own the data, when you run the AI models on your own data, and when, you, when you're responsible for your own journey. Of course, using synthetic models, um, you know, auto-generated uh, algorithms, et cetera, can really assist you refine the modeling. So where you, where you seek to you know, embed open source, you know, hugging face type um, you know, language models, that can really help you augment your own learning. You know, but for us, it's about um, using that framework to really understand what area, what technology we need to use to solve that business problem. Because it could be that we have, you know, three technology solutions that are solving. You know, one is an analytical AI engine, one is the conversational AI engine, and one is really looking at the experience and productivity of AI and how it can adopt. And it needn't be the same platform. 
it could be three entirely different platforms and that that really helps us kind of focus really on the different objectives of the organization what well, did you say that you started with 50 business use cases? 30 yeah 30, 30 and then 30 you use narrow cases, down yeah. to three okay. to three yeah right okay. three that we're immediately focused on because you know they generate the most value um, uh, they impact productivity uh, uh, in a positive sense, mm. so they get rid of manual process. They they also help us automate, mm. and they also generate uh, will help us generate more revenue. Right. Okay. You also mentioned during your keynote about you know um, uh, getting the employees uh, buy in, right, to contribute to the whole process as Absolutely, well. Absolutely. Yeah. And there's uh, some to some extent there's some resistance to change, and I guess uh, that stems from fear of failure, the fear of losing their jobs. So taking an example of this uh, 5 million rows of Excel spreadsheet, right, um, that you identify as a potential for, for using AI as a solution to speed up uh, productivity. How has the employees uh, you know, accepted that kind of uh, potential change um, or benefit that AI Yeah, you know, it's a, it's, a great, it's a great question. I think, I think um, you know, first of all, it's, it's realizing that what you're doing today isn't necessarily um, the best way to do your job, right? And by that I mean we're not looking to replace humans here. We're looking to increase productivity. So when you ask the simple question, you know, how long does it take for you to get the data that you need to do your job? You know, the answer that I got was, you know, four to five days. Okay. How accurate is that information well it's already six weeks old by the time we've generated that data okay so how would you feel if we were able to provide you um, current data at a click of a button without the manual process that you have to go through that takes you currently four days the answer is obviously well that'd be great because then I can focus on more productive tasks so you know for us it's really about you know, explaining that we're here to help and to be, um, uh, to transform. I, I, IT's role in the organization is transformed from being largely transactional to being more strategic. So offering solutions to the business. So that's been part of, you know, my role is to really encourage the business to think more strategically and to think of us as a partnership with the business to evolve, you know, what they're trying to do. And secondly, I think it's also about providing a psychological safety for the organization so that we can do these experiments, right? Because it might not be that, um, you know, everything might not be successful, right? So we might need to learn, um, uh, develop fast solutions. We might fail on some and the outcomes might not be what we expect. It might also be that we need to change the business process to adapt to a better way of working. One of the things that we've noticed is that the photographs that we take at, at the depot level that we receive over email, that's a broken process right now because it takes so long. Often, often the units that we have um, are in the depot for over 14 days. So if we can make decisions really fast, immediately, if that, if that container hits a depot, as soon as that container hits a depot, we can make a decision as to whether to fix it, to maintain it. Where the, where the maintenance fees go, whether we pay that maintenance fee or whether the customer pays that maintenance fee or whether we just flat out sell the unit. If we can make that decision there and then extremely fast, it benefits everyone. It benefits the depot, it benefits you know, the container sales team. It also benefits the direct line customers because we don't have, um, you know, we're suffering at the moment in the industry with a capacity problem in the depots. So it solves the, the depot's issue in terms of capacity and congestion. It also solves um, a revenue issue with us because we, we sell faster. We're not paying dig out fees. We're not paying storage fees for the units. So those type of business problems can be easily explained, providing you've got the opportunity to do so. And having that psychological safety to, to, uh, and a top-down view from the CEO across the C-level peers to say, hey, we're going to experiment on this stuff, see if things work. We might fail on some, we'll succeed on others. But, you know, you've got to see that as a positive and you've got to be prepared to put effort in. And culturally, sometimes failure isn't, isn't a positive thing, especially, you know, in, in Asia, in right? Asia, yeah. If you were to say to somebody, okay, we're going to, we might mm -hmm. fail, or, you know, that's a negative thing, you might not even want to start. So actually the psychological safety mm -hmm. aspect is really, really important. 
And from an IT standpoint, it's, it's okay. We, in fact, we've changed the word uh, from failure to discover. Yeah. So let's discover together, right? right? As opposed okay. to, to fail, right? right? So, you know, using simple tools and, uh, and services and encouraging, mm. you know, the journey to be taken by everyone at the same time collectively, mm. I think is really important. Maybe start with small wins or, you know, those uh, easier, smaller projects that's the pilot yeah, to and show that, the benefits. And that's absolutely spot on. So actually what we did, uh, the business problem that we were solving earlier, uh, I talked about the, the five million rows of data. Yes. The platform that we use today, which is a cloud platform, uh, failed to interrogate a query with a million rows of information. By using a big data uh, platform, we were able to interrogate 52 million rows of data in a matter of seconds. And actually showing the business that this is feasible with new technology is part of the journey that we all need to go on. You know, and it's like an aha moment. It's like here, here's something that we've piloted and it's worked. You know, this is a massive game changer. So now the conversation shifted. It's not, can we remove Excel? It's, oh my God, we've got access to 52 million rows of data. Can I add more data to the problem to actually increase the analytics, to increase the amount of questions in plain English that I can ask the platform so that we can solve some of the big challenges. Uh, and what we're finding is that's feasible with today's technology. So, so it's a, a really uh, good way of experimenting alongside the business, proving the technology, showing a small use case that can really ignite passion in the organization to get people moving in the same direction. And at the same time, you also encourage this uh, creativity mindset as well, isn't it? Like, you yeah, know, innovation, creativity, exactly, it's spot right. on. Yeah, spot on. So with yeah. uh, AI, uh, the current iteration of AI being such a disruptive technology, right? How do you see IT leaders uh, sort of leading the conversation around thought leadership with your peers, or not just within the organization, but also with your peers and you know, regionally, globally? Yeah. Is it becoming more and more important because AI is such a, you know, it's, it's not going away anytime soon? Yeah, yeah, no, that's right. And I, I, I love these type of events because it, it brings you closer to what's really happening. Uh, you know, for me, um, it's really important to learn from um, the discovery that others have made in the industry, as much as it is to share my own discoveries and our, our discoveries as a company. And I think that exchange of knowledge is becoming more and more critical. I mean, let's face it, we're all learning, right? We're all continuing to learn. But I think you've got to have a, an open mind and a growth mindset to really uh, infuse not only the experience that you've had in the past, but also you know, legitimize um, the experience that you have in the future by leveraging opportunities such as AI to really enhance the way that you work and the way that you think about solving business problems. And, and the way that I look at it is, you know, CIOs today have, have always had a tool belt uh, around their waist with lots of different technology solutions <laughs> that they can pull on, right? Now, you know, they've got a um, huge amount of capability, right? You know, they've got, they've got some tools that they can use that are far more powerful than they ever were. Uh, and perhaps the belt is, is shrunk because you don't need so many tools to solve some problems. But it doesn't really um, change the business problems that you're trying to solve. What it means is, you know, you need to start think dif thinking uh, differently about the problems that you're trying to solve to really understand whether or not they can be resolved by AI. Because as I said before, not every problem can be solved with AI. So there isn't a silver bullet that AI can offer, but it's, it's become a really important um, tool set that CIOs need to learn, need to adopt, need to embrace, and also need to encourage uh, their organizations to think about. And I think as, we all, as we're all learning, as we're all adopting, um, you know, we need to, we, we need to um, you know, share information, and events like this are absolutely critical for doing that. You talk about AI not being a silver bullet, and I guess uh, there's a saying in IT that you know, the only change that is constant is change itself, right? And I think when it comes to uh, such a big disruptive technology as uh, uh, AI, what do you think are the um, 
most estimated overestimation of the its, uh, potential and underestimation of its you know uh, potential sort of uh, difficulties and challenges when it comes to deploying the technology. Yeah, that's a, that's a really great question, and I'd also you know I think change is a constant. I'd agree with that. I think that's still true, but I also would say and probably um, you know build on top of that by saying change is no longer a choice. I think we all have to change. We all have to adopt AI. Now, to what degree the adoption will, will take is dependent on the industry, is dependent on the leadership of your organization in embracing that technology. And it's also um, dependent on things like regulations, data sovereignty, and other external factors that need to come into play. Um, you know, we were talking before on the panel in, and, um, you know, the banking industry, which you know I've, I've spent 15 years or so in the industry, is heavily regulated, right? You're dealing with credit card information, PII data, you know, MAS and HKMA, and lots of um, you know restrictions on what we can and can't do with data, especially when it comes to personally identifiable information. So there are you know uh, controls and frameworks that organisations need to build in order to get the most out of AI. So I would say, I would say um, set the vision first. You know, what is your strategy in your organization, in your vertical? Because it will be different. You can't just adopt a, uh, a, another company's strategy. You need to have a vision and a strategy yourself. How far are you going to go with the technology? Then second, you know, figure out what the business use cases are first before you even think about the, uh, the adoption of uh, the technology. So work through, immerse yourself in the business, really define you know, the top 20, top 30, top 40 business use cases. And you can use things like human-centered design techniques to crowdsource the ideas in your organization uh, to facilitate an understanding of what those challenges might be. Because everyone has a voice in your organization from the administrator that works remotely in the office to you know, the CEO, everyone's got a voice and needs to have a voice. Um, so that's really important to, to build uh, those business use cases. And probably third, from a cultural standpoint and from a people standpoint, you've got to make sure that you're bringing everyone along the journey with you. You, know, you mentioned about barriers. I, I've seen some of the barriers being um, the mindset. Um, I've seen some barriers being the reluctance to give uh, knowledge away because of fear. Um, and I've also seen trust issues, uh, you know, uh, as I've talked to, 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 to many other C-level executives about this same challenge. So, you know, for me, it's about uh, building that psychological safety, as I mentioned before, in the organization to say, actually, it's OK. Right. You know, your role is secure. What we're going to do is adapt your role. We're going to make it better. We're going to make your decisions faster. We're going to give you tools that give you access to uh, data driven insights as opposed to building complex workflows with Excel. You know, we're gonna automate those processes. So for me, it's also about you know, encouraging uh, the, the people strategy um, to uh, be the foundation of that innovation uh, because that's really where you know, some of the barriers will, will exist uh, because of fear, because of trust, because of mindset challenges. And you've really got to ensure that uh, that as a foundation is looked after and taken care of. Um, and there's some fantastic courses uh, available, Singapore Computer Society, NTU, others, you know, Skills Future, um, credits available to Singaporeans. Um, uh, you know, so, you know, get on, get learning. Um, it's, a, it's an amazing time for technologists. It's an amazing time for companies to innovate. Uh, and I'm so thankful to be a, a, a part of uh, Seco's journey. You're right, yeah. You, you mentioned, you know, uh, start learning, right? And I think I do agree with you. Every one of us has a pl part to play. Uh, mm. There's no sort of waiting around for, I guess, top level sort of uh, guidance in terms of what to do and what to, you know, wait for. It's, we do have a responsibility and I guess, uh, exactly right? Exactly right, yeah, yeah. To get yeah. our own learning in place as well. Yeah, and don't, don't be fearful. Try it out, you know, mm. experiment yourself. Uh, it's fairly easy now. All the interfaces are are open, you can get test accounts in a lot of different ways and uh, explore the, uh, right, yeah. the free and subsidized yeah. training that's available uh, you know, to you. Uh. Like you said, let's discover together, right? Exactly, yeah. Right, spot yeah. on, spot on. So on that note, thank you so much, Damien, for your time today. Most welcome, most welcome, pleasure. Thank you.